Greetings and welcome to the Badger Cave's West Wing, where our stealthy polecats ferret out the best feels, funnies, and what the fucks to discuss slam bam badger style. Your sinuous hosts for this evening are myself, Supreme Doge in charge, Brian, our polecat punster, Hannah, the moak of the Stefanson, with our special guest, Sauer, I mean, N.C. Clark, totally not somebody else. Along with our news team, Allison and Scott. I'm totally convinced by that, Brian. <laughs> I'm, I'm a news team? team? You I'm are the, the, news, news the news team. Yes, you're the I'm news team. I'm the news team. I'm the news team. I'm the news team. I'm the news team. Considering how easy it is to be a journalist these days, <laughs> I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't consider that the, large, the highest of accolades. But you um, know what, though? I, I was actually... I w used to be a journalist. I was actually paid to be a journalist. So... I can actually say that. So I guess, I guess I'm legitimately a news team type person then. There you go. I was about to say I'm the Andy Rooney of the news team, but I think we're all Andy Rooney, aren't we? We're a news team full of Andy yeah. Rooney. Yes. I think so. I think you might be right Agreed. there, Mike. Everyone's got a little bit of Andy Rooney in them. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ, is that is that rape culture? <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. This evening, we will be discussing the following topics. The Democratic National Committee email leak causes accusations to fly thick and fast. Now that's rape culture. Father wins damages from family court after being falsely accused of sexual assault by a social worker. Sports Illustrated cover model Ashley Graham gets body shamed by social justice warriors because she chose to lose weight. And the Good Man Project opines on why men aren't marrying. Is opines the way you pronounce that? Yes, that's, just, that's the way I did it. Opines. Yeah, it's good uh, enough. And finally... Our bonus story for the patron-only after show. BuzzFeed's six reasons we should stop referring to women as females right now. If you want to enjoy further personalized discussion with the Badgers on select topics such as this story above, become a patron. Now here are the Polecats, Scott and Allison, with a summary of the news. Eventually we'll get it right, I think. Yeah. Hey, I did okay. Yeah, you did good. You did good. Okay. I'll good pat boy. you on the back. Good boy. 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 No newspaper today. No rolled up newspaper on the nose today. All right, Mr. Journalist. Yes, so I am. Begin. Yes. Uh, let's see. So, father wins damages from family court after being falsely accused of sexual assault. Jonathan, is it Copeland? I guess? Is it Copeland? Uh, or is it supposed uh, to be Copeland? Uh, we'll go. I'm... Uh, uh, Looks like Coupland. Anyway, I digress. Jonathan Coupland has recently been awarded 86,000 pounds from the Children and Family Court Advisory Support Service. Kafkas? I'm guessing that is. Coupland was falsely accused of sexually assaulting his six-year-old daughter by a former social worker from Kafkas named Susie Smith. Her employers have since sacked her for this misconduct. Uh, Susie Smith, huh? That sounds like a freaking pseudonym. Yeah. It sounds like something oh. totally not sour grape. That's a, oh, sorry, sorry. S U Z I. So I find it highly dubious that that's a real name. Yeah, it's it's it seems somehow you know what? But well, this is a digression. It's good to see that at least he had some recourse, and these people are being uh, false accusers are being held to some form of justice. Exactly. Although I assume that he's she's not going to be spending a day in jail. Probably well, not. Also, also, Kafka's is a synonym for something else <laughs> <laughs> involving spending some time in jail. So let's see where this goes. Okay. All right. Let's go to the next news item because this is just a quick run through. Yes. Uh, Democratic National Committee email leak causes accusations to fly thick and fast. There's a lot of talk circulating around the recent Democratic National Committee emails released via WikiLeaks. The DNC, the DNC leaked emails show the Democratic National Committee officials, including Chairwoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz, colluded with key media personalities and organizations to intentionally rig the Democratic primary election against Bernie Sanders in order to support Hillary Clinton. After the story broke, Chairwoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz was forced to resign her position, only to be employed as a campaign manager for Hillary Clinton less than three hours later. I don't have much to say on this because I don't really follow American politics. I, at the risk of insulting everyone, I think you guys have a choice between someone who co sucks corporate dick and a corporate dick. So there you go. <gasps> and you're right. <laughs> yeah, you're hey, totally look, right. Don't believe me. I voted for Kodos. 
And the biggest question I have is how many people out there were actually surprised by this? Like, was there anybody who was <laughs> it was was just absolutely fucking shocked to find out that the Clintons were rigging an election? Yeah. <laughs> was there anybody well, who was not shocked or who, who was absolutely shocked to find out that any establishment politician was rigging an election? I mean, that sounds on. like a that sounds like an opening to discussion, so we yeah. have to Okay, let's let's. Okay, that is. That, I, I'm 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 assuming Hannah, you're putting yourself down for that item. Yeah, I better. Okay, all right. Well, <laughs> That's the impression I, I hear got. the quill scratching in the background. Let's move on to the next one before. Yeah, uh, Sports Illustrated cover model Ashley Graham gets body shamed by social justice warriors. In an in an, blah, 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 in a new tongue that I just bought. Um, in an article written for CNN, Lisa Respers, France reports on Ashley Graham, a formerly plus-sized fashion model who has once again become the subject of public body shaming. However, this time the body shaming is not focused on her previously curvy body, but it is instead focused on dismissing her newer, thinner body. Yeah. I, I, you know what, I, I read this and I just was like, you know, this is... There's not much you can really say about this one except just whatever... I mean, first of all, I don't think she's that much thinner now. No. Um, well, not... it depends. I mean, she is noticeably thinner, I think, but yeah, I don't think it's such a huge thing that it should cause all this uproar. But we'll yeah, get to if that. If I eventually. remember right, she wasn't all that much plus sized either. Just no, she wasn't. You know. hmm. So it's, it's, yeah, yeah, and I think I, I don't really think we're going to be revisiting this in the discussion because there's just nothing to revisit. It's just, well, yeah. uh, in that case, I do have one thing to say. <laughs> No, fuck those guys. <laughs> just, just absolutely right. fuck them. Uh, the, the, the whole fat shaming is bad, skinny shaming is okay thing. Fuck all of you. Yeah. Just uh, that's it. That's all I gotta say. Uh, you I'll guys have all heard me rant on this before. That's yeah. it. I'll say something real quickly. This is just another situation of damned if you do, damned if you don't. With these people, because they are never fucking happy, and they will always, always, always move the goalpost every single fucking time. That's all we're saying here. Same bullshit, different day. And she doesn't even seem like, uh, and it was sort of annoying to hear them. Or who was it? The woman that I thought her face looks like she someone was chewing on it. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember Tony something or other. Um, and I was like, she wasn't fat before, and she's not particularly. She's not too skinny. Now. She just sort of went from av slightly above average to slightly below average. Big fucking deal. Let her alone. Anyway. Um, do you want to let's let's go through the final one because it's just Last the one. best. Yeah. yeah. Good yeah. man project opines on why men aren't marrying. Ashlyn Tedford or Al fuck, I am just terrible tonight. Excuse me. <clears throat> Pardon me. Allison Tedford and Jay Blevins from the Good Men Project take another swing in explaining why men are still giving up on marriage in the 21st century. The first com they first come up with several of their own theories. But by the end of their article, Allison and Jay attempt to redefine what marriage is and what it even means to be married. Overall, the complete lack of self-awareness contained within this article cannot be properly understood without first reading it in its entirety. However, suffice to say that men have been deemed responsible for the angst of all unmarried women everywhere. Oh, yeah, that article's amazing. We're, we're, I think we're going to... It's on, on Slate to read the whole thing, and it really needs to be read in its original glory just to, to bask... In the insanity of it, um, I mean, it's not that insane when it when it comes to the Good Men Project, but it it it's pretty, it's pretty you know inmates running the asylum quality to it. But uh, yeah, and, and in terms of all, all of your faux pas there, I think it's because you you ha you know how feel the pressure of our expectations. I do, you know, you, I really you, do. I've never revealed yourself. You revealed your genealogy, as it were. <laughs> I'm just I'm just I'm feeling the pressure. I'm just uh. I'm just Drink not used more. to being part of a news team. You know, it's been Drink. a while. It lowers your expectations of yourself. Oh, well, you know, I wish I had something to drink. drink. All I have is water, and that's not quite doing what I need, so. <laughs> and I have uh, chai tea, which... Maybe I, I should open a Patreon to get people to buy me alcohol. What do you think, guys? Um, I don't know if I can recommend that. Stranger things have happened. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it could work. It could work. What guy got, what is it, uh, uh, egg salad or something? He got money for it, so hey. Oh, no, else? it was a potato salad. Oh, potato salad. But he yeah. can't confirm. He like it's his first potato. I read the. I actually read the. The uh, the the Kickstarter. It was his first potato salad. So he was going to send samples to people, but he could not confirm the quality of the samples. So. Um. Yeah. 
But at least he's like honest, you know. He's 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 not gonna promise something that he can't deliver. There you go. In 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 the salad realm of food <laughs> stuff. I appreciate uh, his honesty. Yes, definitely. Okay, so um, now I'm gonna just allow everybody to digest everything, all of the all of the little. What is it called? Tapas? Is it is that the word? Tapas? Like little small, small plates. Or, small little plates. Little small plates of food Tapas. that are that have been that have been arrayed artfully before you. And I, I can I, I, I t sense the tension as as people want to talk about the um the email link leak yes. link leak la, la, la. before we but before we go into the but before we go into the leaks um I, I just want to say with Ashley Graham the woman who was body shamed for her weight loss um when she was larger why didn't someone take the opportunity there to tell her to get off the stage you fat fuck because. <laughs> Because that seems to be the phrase these days. Well, she so. you know she didn't interrupt the Young Turks, so. <laughs> oh, Ashley. I'm really um, I'm really a little confused by that because um, I, I I don't know it just seems Sank or Jank. Sorry, I keep being told that I'm mispronouncing his name. Doesn't matter. It's, it's, everybody it's, is offended it's, by the fact that I'm. It's a C. Right. It's a C. I'll be bugging if a C is pronounced J. Fucking call him Jank. Jank. Okay. Just, just call him Stink Yogurt. There you go. Stink Yogurt. Okay, yeah. right. But it's just it's just hilarious watching him go up to Alex Jones and call it, get off the stage, you fact fuck. No, that was Anna Kasparian that did that. Oh, that's, oh that's sorry. Why that's, it's, it's, yeah. that's why it's especially delectable, because she's always the one that's saying body shaming is wrong, okay? But then she's the one that does it at that point. Okay. She, she also called him a bitch, which is a gendered slur that she would oh. also take issue with normally. Oh, my. I did yeah, want to say one like, thing to this. To the, to the subject of the Young Turks and Alex Jones, uh, I guess, party, booty crap, whatever, crashing. Um, I didn't know that he just invited himself on the set. Um, I guess there's some contradiction there. He might have actually been invited. Yeah, there's um, conflicting stories. They say yeah. he was not invited. He says he was. Mm -hmm. Well, regardless, I, I don't think that we actually opined upon the morality of Yank, Jank. Um, stink. Stink. Okay, Yank. <laughs> Jank. Um, actually, or, or sorry, not Jank. Alex actually going to Jank's set. I, because it was just so fucking hilarious. The, the whole thing was just... It, it's... It, I don't know. Like I, 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 I guess it's bad that he party crashed if he did indeed party crash, but... It's still fucking hilarious. He just wanted to give him a shirt that said rape on it and Bill Clinton's <laughs> face. He was trying to be nice, you know? And that's I just... want that shirt. Yeah, that's yeah, what I would want that shirt. Okay, Alex, so... Alex thought he was cold. He's like, here, put this shirt on. It'll keep you yeah. warm. <laughs> I mean, it'll nice. make you angry and then you'll get hot under the collar, but you'll still be warm. I mean, yeah. At the conference, I was signing shirts for I all sorts of people, nobody. and I kept writing rape on them. <laughs> it's the funniest thing I could think of. Every, everything, everybody said the same. Well, at least one person said the same. I can't wear this in front of my mother now, Mike. Because you wrote the word rape on it. Did you really do that, Mike? Seriously? Like, you're already yes, in the worst did. place in the world. <laughs> what did you expect? Yeah, well, okay, all right. But before we go on, and before I potentially do a brief possibly brief shell. I just want to do a shout out to the Fathers for Justice guys. Um, I, I know Brian might have some images that he might like to show, but they took, I, I, I gave them a series of, uh, or just one shirt, the Badger Crew shirt, which was very snazzy, and they wore it to one of their um, their speaker's corners in uh, London. So if, uh, if Brian can cue that up and we can do the shout out or not... Maybe. I, I you need can. Some Jeopardy music? Do you need some Jeopardy music? Jeopardy. Jeopardy. Yeah, no, no. I'm, I'm bringing it up right now. I, I miss. I lost the whole fucking syllable there. Did you know this? Jep, jeopardy. 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 Jeopardy music? Jeopardy. Don't play the music. Oh, you just uh, sound like this. you're from. Uh, God, I can't think of what neighborhood it is in New York that sounds like that, but yeah. Just sound like you're from New York. Brooklyn? Jeopardy. Yeah, yeah, probably. Okay. You're dropping right. the air. Nobody drops the air. So thanks, Rob. Here's your shout out nice. that you look. You guys look great. Uh, I'm actually curious to know what kind of um, reception you got from the crowd as you were talking in your snazzy Badger Crew T-shirts. And the event that they were doing this at was called um, Speakers Corner. They uh, they convene, I think, monthly at Speakers Corner um, in the UK. I'm not exactly sure where it's located, 
but it is located with people. I can see one young woman in the front there who looks very unple un, un displeased, but per this one, she's the hippie. Yes, yeah, she, she might be yeah. making a phone call, emergency phone call to the, the the sisterhood or something. Oh my God, someone's speaking out, or she's just in her own world, and I'm I'm full when of the, shit. When you and the squad are all dressed up and ready to go out and be oppressed. Yeah. <laughs> She was probably, anyway, like, yeah, just not interested in that conversation. Who knows? Yeah, she was probably just not interested. Um, but, yeah, it's a, they go out and they do speeches in public to try to get people interested in the issues uh, related to men's, men's rights and, and men's issues. And they're a pretty cool bunch of people. And at the com conference, I gave them um, T-shirts, and I said, you can have these T-shirts for free if you wear them at, you know, at the speaker's corner. I don't know how many times they're going to wear them at the speaker's corner, but they did it once, so they, they've earned their T-shirts. So thank you. Yes, You're thank great. you. Nice. Do you uh, want yeah. me to read the letter that they sent? Oh, sure. Sure, go ahead. Okay. They're great uh, bunch of guys, by the way. Hi, this is Rod from the London Conference, the gingy-haired person. Well, here we are, speaker's corner, Sunday the 24th of July, 2016. We are the main fortnightly bunch there. Brian did not make this Sunday, not me. You filmed Brian with Linton, bottom left. So let me go back to the picture he's talking about. Uh, I believe it's this one. So this yeah. is Brian right here. Uh, Richard Ford yeah. Center initiated our work here about two and a half years ago. I have known and worked with Richard for six years. Four out of five of us in the photo were at the conference. We work with Mike Buchanan in protests, and many of us, Mike's supporters, were delighted to volunteer at the conference and pay the ticket price. We got free dinners with our celebrities. If you're interested in our names, top left, Ewan and me. Uh, top Rob. Bottom, bottom left, Linton, Richard, and Hayden. We will be sending yeah, a couple they're more. Great. Yeah. I will be sending a couple more action photos separately. No photos of me because I was taking them and I didn't think. Ewan was wearing a Trump t-shirt. Hayden was speaking on the other side, so none of them either. If you have more appropriate email for these photos to you, let me know. I sent... Comic.badgerpod.com Yes. I sent Merlin, or Swain, which is his actual, his actual name, the clip of Allison speaking about him on Honey Badger Radio. I am putting out feelers to the younger guys who may be able to set up a chat for you all with Swain. We are all meeting this Saturday for another mandate meeting of a, around 30 active people in the UK Manosphere, including Mike Buchanan, chaired by Swain. I will send photos one at a time because my laptop is a little overcrowded. Rod. And these are the pictures he sent us. Aw, uh, that's so sweet. And thank you for wearing the shirts like you said you would. Um, these are great guys. They helped uh, organize the I ICMI, and they have an incredible wealth of knowledge for, about activism over the last couple decades. Uh, where they were when they were active in the Fathers for Justice. Um, so, and hopefully we'll be able to get them on. It's particularly uh, Swain, or who I referred to as Merlin, during last week's Thursday show. <laughs> He's pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay, so speaking Can I of ask a question, real quick. Yeah. If somebody were interested sure. in getting one of those very fine-looking T-shirts, where might they go to get something like that? Um, I or actually, I'm, I'm really afraid. I, well, I still have some left. I'll probably be putting them up. Um, speaking of you know swag, we I usually put T-shirts and stuff up for fundraisers and stuff. I don't usually just sell them outright, so they're thank yous for donations. In this case, they oh, got okay. them as a thank you for for just going out and wearing them in public. Well, damn, um, I was trying to help and Shill. just for being you. awesome. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, you helped Shill. I mean, she you, you, you somewhat <laughs> uh, you, you you introduced uh, the potential of Shilling. But yeah, I, I usually keep the 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 the, the um, shirts for real life events or donations. Okay. So the next the next opportunity will to get a shirt, uh, a Badger Crew shirt will will be in uh, whenever I set up the fundraiser that I'm going to need to do to in order to start um, getting the down payment for a potential studio space. And segue right into it. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I said that we, if we made uh, two thousand six hundred and fifty a month, we could break ground with a real life Badger Cave. 
and that amount would allow us to cover the monthly costs for brick and mortar location. And I'm breaking down that amount into specific steps that we need to make this happen. Um, it's a goal that's really important to me, and I hope it is to everyone listening as well. It means that if in your if you're in North America, you can go to the road running past your home and know that after however many lefts and rights, you'll come to a place where the badgers are. <laughs> It's also a huge step forward for men's, the men's rights community to have an actual real-life studio space devoted to bringing awareness to men's issues and supporting those artists and creators who are making it happen. Because I think it's really important that we not just um, have a place on YouTube, but that we have a real-life place where we can collaborate and start to develop our ability to talk about these things, to sell these things, and to make these things into stories, these ideas into stories. I'm really passionate about them. I'm really inspired by them. I think there's a lot of potential in the issues that we talk about for creating really powerful works of art. Um, in, in terms of this location, securing location will require me signing on to a mortgage, which is definitely a risk I'm willing to take to make this a reality. In this case, um, the next funding goal is I'm going to be setting is going to be 1,500 per episode, and that will allow me to cover the mortgage, the tax, land taxes, and the utilities to make sure that we secure that space and it doesn't get snapped up. And I'll be giving more information about that as we go along. Um, all right, so our next funding goal of 1,500 will allow me to do that to secure the space, and I'm really hoping that we get to it soon because the property in question was recently reduced down to 59k and may be snapped up in any moment. Um, and also, if we get to that 15, or 1500 per episode deadline by August 7th, Karen promises to lend or to send a ham sandwich to Yank, Jank, Sank Stink. of the Young Turks. For those of you who don't know, when Karen appeared on the Young Turks, Yank... Jank got so pissed at her apostasy, he demanded she make him a sandwich in <laughs> grand walrus style. Make me a sandwich, woman. So if you want to make this a reality as much as I do, and you want to see Yank get that sandwich he demanded from Karen so passionately, then support us at www.patreon.com slash honeybadgerradio. <laughs> Because <laughs> Jake sure. needs another sandwich. Yeah, he, he definitely. Okay, we can't be body shaming here. Oh yeah, that's true. He he needs he needs a sand. He kind of. <laughs> but and I'm just okay. Before I continue, I just want to ask anyone listening if they're not open to supporting us and breaking ground for men's rights, just take a moment and tell us why and send the answers to topic at badgerpod.com. You don't need to tell me. You don't have the money. Just if you do, why you aren't af why you're afraid or concerned or anything. Every little bit of input helps, as long as it's offered in good faith and with respect to our autonomy as badgers. And if you're on the fence, here's testimony from someone who's actually contributed. Phil, Phi Phi Delta, when I'm able to make some donation, I know that I can trust how it be used. You guys come up with a plan, you share it with us, you take all the risks, and then you follow through with it to completion. You even provide video evidence where applicable. This, why, this is why it's so easy to trust you guys. There are no tricks and no catches. It just can't get any simpler than, that, than this. Okay, and that's exactly the way I want it to be. We put it out there, we put the proposal out there, you say, yeah, let's do it, and we do it. And every road, and if it happens, every road, a road will become a road to the Badgers. All right, www.patreon.com slash honeybadgerradio. And with that, I shall step off the stage and seed the, 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 the thing that I am okay. on. The, the right. soapbox? Yes. All right, so um, let's look at the leaks. DNC links. So... so I haven't been able to follow this uh, as closely as I'd like to because there are thousands of emails to go through and stuff to fish through to find out what exactly all this entails. There's a lot of conjecture. A lot of people are talking about stuff. There are some juicy bits in there. But that's why I brought my good friend and sister from another mister, uh, N.C. Clark, because I figured she had followed this closer than I am since she has a very uh, deep understanding of uh, politics and an interest in that stuff. So that's why she's here. But I just I do want to say though, just as a general comment, what a dumpster fire this has become and it is kind of glorious to look at because um, from what um, 
what I'm gathering, this is something that is related to something we have discussed when Gamergate happened, which is there is a problem with the media. And there are people who have denied, 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 deflected as in every instance that uh, somehow our mainstream regular media sources could be as corrupt, if not more corrupt, than gaming media. And I think that we're getting an idea that this is, this is um, not true. You know, Polygon doesn't look so bad right now compared to what I'm seeing here. Really? So, really, Brian? Well, Polygon's pretty bad. Poly yeah. <laughs> <laughs> come on. No, come on. <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not sticking up for them. But, you know, I, I don't know that they can potentially be as dangerous as the stuff that's in these emails. But, um, yeah, they're a little bit stupid to be they're just Yeah, they're just more stupid than anything yeah. else. So. So, um, so, yeah, that's one of the things I wanted to look at. So, Clark, do you have any thoughts on all of this shit? Do on. I? Uh, what do you want to know specifically? Well, because... I do have I do have a little timeline here. Ooh. Um, so, okay, July 22nd, WikiLeaks releases almost 20,000 uh, uh, emails from key figures of the DNC committee. All right? Uh, on the same day, DNC links already is trending on Twitter as WikiLeaks starts to find and share on social media several key emails in completely exposing the corruption in the committee. By the way, Twitter has actually made it to where the DNC links hashtag uh, could not trend by fucking with no, things. No, they couldn't. They, they couldn't do that, or they didn't do that? Uh, it, according to WikiLeaks, that they, the Twitter was suppressing their, uh, their tweets and things of that yes. sort. So, yay. Yeah. So Twitter was suppressing the links so people couldn't actually talk about it. Uh, that was on July 23rd. Twitter kills hashtag DNC links. Trend DNC link, or leak, rather, which is not plural, like the original, comes in its place. People begin to see that Twitter is actively suppressing the story. Reports begin of Twitter using shadow banning, link flagging, um, which says things like this link may be dangerous, and trend manipulation to suppress the great revelations made by these emails. On July 24th, pundits involved in the DNC committee themselves begin to spin that the Russians did it, and Trump convinced Putin to have it happen. Hillary Clinton hires Debbie Wasserman Schultz immediately after resignation as top campaign official for the Hillary 2016 campaign. On July 25th, the Democratic National Convention of 2016 begins, tensions even higher than before. From what I heard, there are more people that, were, that are protesting at the Na Democratic National Convention than there were people that were at... Republican National Convention t in total. And guess what, Brian? What? The DNC built a wall around yeah. the event. <laughs> <laughs> and it was huge. It was really huge. It was huge. <laughs> yes, it was. Um, make America great again? Make the, the DNC great again, I guess. Uh, okay, so hypocritically, they built two walls. One requiring ID entry for the Wells into the Wells Fargo Center, and the other one around the convention stage. Bernie Bros began chanting outside the convention, and within within it, things like "Hell no, DNC, we won't vote for Hillary." Major news networks involved finally acknowledged the emails. <laughs> Good work, guys. By the way, we're, this is what, how many days after this happened? Uh, we're talking three, four days. On the twenty-second is when it happened. The news didn't want to talk about it until the fucking 25th. So three days later, they sort of start to get on the ball. Okay? Um, with the footnote of, experts say the Russians did it as their unethical pushback of the Sanders campaign was suddenly okay because of that. Specifically, MSNBC uh, has an article specifically saying that the Russians are likely responsible. Um, like anybody gives a shit. On the 26th, hilariously, it is revealed that the, that the DNC committee were warned about the intrusion and they waited too long to attempt to fix it. As Louise Miranda would say, LOL. Bernie Sanders gets booed by his own supporters and delegates for endorsing Hillary even after all of this came out. Where th there was collusion against him. Like they were planning to find a way to remove Sanders as a nominee and they used these emails to collude and remove him, and even after all that, and after he knows, he still co-signs and endorses Hillary Clinton. On the 27th, with a caveat, with with, a caveat though. Okay, the caveat is 
is he is not going to share his uh, the um, emails that he has acquired from his own supporters. Okay, to be the reason why he chose to be a uh, Democrat because originally he was an independent. The whole reason he decided to do that was because the logistics of it all. The DNC is powerful. They have a lot of um, people. They have numbers. They have a, b a bunch of people who have well, emails they, and phone numbers on. and all that information of all the voters and all the supporters that he has. He supposedly isn't going to share them with Hillary Clinton. And that's the way, I guess, he'll get back at someone. I don't know. It's kind of stupid, though. Yeah, he was basically just going with what was uh, improving his odds, right, by running under the Democratic ticket. If you don't run under the Democrat ticket, you cannot get any of that voter information. They will not allow you to get that. So there you go. So you have to play the game in order to be a part of the game that is already rigged in somebody else's favor. Well, he was. He also had to uh, be uh, registered, well, not registered as a Democrat, but be a... Uh, run as a Democrat to actually get into the uh, debates, too, didn't he? Yeah. Because otherwise they wouldn't have let him in at all. Yep. So... So what about the Taco Bowl uh, <laughs> thing? The, I, I want to hear about the Taco Bowls. Oh, man. Um... <laughs> I want to hear it. Come on, now. You, you got it. The Taco <laughs> Bowl engagement. It was basically the way that they were discussing getting the Hispanic vote. Okay, vote. The, the way they were... Okay, there's three things we have to take into consideration when looking at the emails, and there's three big parts. One, there was an attack on Bernie Sanders specifically. Um, two, there was a money issue. There's some kind of Hillary victory fund where she's take, she has like $82 million from a bunch of different states. See, the DNC is supposed to be the Democrat National Committee. It's their, it's the entire group of the, uh, the Democrats. It isn't supposed to be the, the, the we fund Hillary Clinton 100% of this money. That, that's not how it's supposed to work. They're supposed to focus on every Democrat in every single state. But they're not. Big surprise. It's an election year. Um, there's also pay to play in there. There's also um, <laughs> the Hispanic. Okay, so what they said in the email here and this I tried to retweet, but I guess Twitter is being a dick again. Um, questionable DNC strategy for l getting out the Latino vote in 2016. So <laughs> they have an email here. It's a, it's a, I guess, a, a objectives that say getting out the Latino vote in 2016 and beyond. Introduction: The U.S. Hispanic population, and then they go on to say it's the biggest generation ever, and we're bringing more in. It's going to be great, guys. Whatever. And then they list out uh, how this can be a window of opportunity for generations. Hispanics are the most brand loyal consumers in the world. Known fact. Hispanic brand loyalty is generational, entire families. Once a brand loses this loyalty, Hispanics never re-engage, unforgiving. And then they go on from there to talk about their long-term relationships to brands. So they're basically doing what I actually assume they would have been doing from forever which is to treat this group as a group that we can target, we can manipulate, and we can get them on our side as long as we make Trump to be some kind of Hispanic-hating, crazy person. Yep. Uh, I will say this uh, from my own personal experience. I know this person. I've shook hands with this person uh, reluctantly. Um, and he is actually your representative, Brian. He is the representative of the 4th District of Come Illinois. On, Gutierrez? Luis Gutierrez. Yeah, yeah Luis, that Luis guy. Gutierrez, yeah. His speech yesterday irked me like no other. He was he's saying, a, well, I'm Puerto guy. Rican. I'm Puerto Rican. And we're still American. We're technically, we're Americans. We're American citizens. It does, to me, the, the whole illegal immigration thing, we're not illegal immigrants, so why should I care about illegal immigrants or illegal immigration? They're like, oh, well... Trump, he, he doesn't like you either. He thinks you're rapists and murderers and everything. You're horrible people. It, it's ridiculous. And this is what they're trying to spin, and this is what they've been trying to do, do forever. Now they just found Trump, who I guess is saying ridiculous things. 
Uh, okay, does does uh, Hannah, I know that you were also chomping at the bit to say some stuff, so. Well, a lot of, uh, a lot of what I was going to talk about has already come up, but there's a couple of things, you know, that I could point out, one of them being, I told you guys so, um, was <laughs> with respect to the Democrats and race, uh, I think we probably already all knew that to begin with, I mean, we've been watching them do that for years and years and years and years, and and it's kind of funny because I mean not funny haha but funny in the uh, I like to say in the George Thorogood sense where he says now you funny too in uh, I, I think it's uh, one bourbon one scotch and one beer but uh, in any case here we have a a political uh, ideology a political party that has based their growth on exploiting and sowing really and then exploiting resentment between the races and and it's kind of coming out now you know to the point where you can see that it's deliberate they're actually deliberately using that discord and it's becoming undeniable and it's really insulting to every person of every race that they're doing it because basically they think you're stupid they think you're so stupid that if they say nice things to you and then they say mean things to you about people that they can get you to think of as others, that that'll make you more loyal to them. If they can pit you against each other, if they can pit all of us against each other, that'll give them more power. And now that it's undeniable that they're doing it, now that there's stuff out there confirming it, you know, the question is, how many people are going to let them? How many people are going to say, oh, okay, well, I'm still going to be a loyal Democrat because I've always been a loyal Democrat. You know, I'm, I'm, they, they're still the party of my, my race. They're still a party of my ethnicity. They're still a party of my religion, whatever. You know, if, if this stuff comes out about other parties, people are expected to abandon them. You know, when, when, Clinton was accused, when Bill Clinton was accused of all kinds of sexual stuff, the first thing, the first line of defense that, that his administration had was to out a bunch of information about a bunch of Republicans. All right, you Republicans hate this stuff? Well, guess what? You guys are doing it too. And, and it did. It got rid of a bunch of Republicans. It shook people's faith in them, and it ended careers. His didn't end. But people who were accused of things that were less, you know, less reprehensible, less less concerning, you know, just basically affairs, where he was, he's been accused of rape. And although it hasn't been proved, and I'm not going to call him a rapist because I do have a standard for proof. If you're going to abandon somebody because of that, you know, it should be across the board. And that's that's kind of where we are right now. You know, what are you going to put up with? Are you going to be put up with being treated like you're stupid? Are you going to be put up with being treated like you owe them something because they said nice things to you? Or are you going to get mad at being used and being stepped on and being held up like you're somebody's property? Because that's what's going on right now. Well, if, if I may interject for just a moment, we, we would I think I would be remiss to not point out that both parties are engaging in the very same things. This is just this is just the spotlight is on the DNC currently. Yes. Um, oh yeah. Uh, both but, parties are. Yes, but my overall point is that you know what the government right now in its current state and over the last let's just say thirty years or so is not the American people's friend. It is not our fucking friend. They're both both teams are working against us, and they you know it's it's turned into this disgusting display of just, you know, tribalism, where it's just like, well, I'm on Team Red, well, I'm on Team Blue, fuck your Team Red, you know, no, well, fuck your Team Blue, it's just like, people just have stopped thinking just almost across the board in, in regards to pretty much everything, and I think, um, I really wish people would be a little bit more savvy and a little bit more engaged in the political process, because these kind of things happen all the time, it's just right now they're being exposed because these people were sloppy with their security, and did some dumb shit, and somebody was like, "Oh, hey, look, look what I can do." So, I know. do want to point something out, though. You've had for for the last, you know, 
almost 100 years now we've had the Democrats going, we're the party of the people, we're the party of the people, the Republicans are racist, the Republicans are sexist. Right. Who's the one it's coming out about? Now it's coming out about the Democrats. They're not the party of the people. They're not any different. Well, they've been exposed. I mean, it's that's not to say that the same things aren't going on on the Republican side, which I'm Yeah, nobody's sure saying the same that. things aren't going on. Yeah, but yeah. the thing is, they're the ones that have said, we're better than that. We're better. Right. We're nice. We're well, yeah, your they, friend. They both have a public face that they put out there to, to seem like, you know, we're doing it for you, folks. But, you know, behind the scenes, it's, it's obviously very, you know, verifiably a different story. So well, it came sure. out. It came out about the Republicans in the '90s. The, yep. There was a lot of anti, uh, you know, anti-religious and anti, or anti-gay stuff and pro-religious stuff that was was debunked real fast. When, like I said, when Clinton's camp kind of let loose all of the things that they they were holding on people. Uh, but once again, you know, that's a that's a situation where the party's going. We're the party that's above that. We're the moral party. We're the we're your friends. Right. You know, your right. church your church should have organized parties for us. You know, things like that. And it was a lie. Well, in this case, the lie on the Democrat side is they're the racists and we're better than that because we don't really have the other side doing that so much. We have the other side doing, oh yeah, you say we're the racists and you're better than that. Well, you're the party of the KKK. Your history shows that you're not better than that. But they're not saying they're the racists and we're better than that. You know, and it's what we've got here is people have bought it. People have bought it ever since the 60s. And it turned out to be a very big lie. And uh, did you know that uh, <clears throat> it's not only the Russians that are likely responsible for the leak, which was a plot by Putin to uh, put Trump in office, apparently, um, but also uh, WikiLeaks was uh, is being run by uh, alt-right gamer MRAs. Yes, that's right. Dun, dun, dun. To, we're, we're running WikiLeaks? Wait, yeah, we're we, going to we, give away all our secrets. <laughs> we, we, yes, MRAs are... For, for, for a group that's so insignificant and laughable, we There's certainly have a great of deal of reach. There's yeah. only 300 of us. Fingers in everybody's pies. I know. Oh, is, is that's that the rape? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> you went there, did you? Yes, uh, I did, and I did <laughs> allow me to Allow me to read the tweet. Parker Malloy, who writes for Upworthy. Oh, yeah, that's that incredibly... Powerful and truthful and totally not clickbaity, scummy uh, spot on the internet. Uh, she wrote in a tweet, Remember when WikiLeaks was all about uncovering government corruption and now they're just alt-right gamer MRAs? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. And then Parker Malloy also wrote, um, when someone made a tweet saying, not a single mention of DNC link in mainstream media. This was, of course, before the mainstream media decided that this was a story worth telling, um, and someone was wondering why they're not talking about it, and instead they're still busy dissecting Melania Trump's speech for more plagiarism. And Parker Malloy wrote, uh, in a response to this comment that was written, a quick media rant incoming. Why isn't anybody covering this? Why aren't people talking about this? Because it's bullshit. So she's basically saying this is not really happening. This doesn't real. It's impossible. Really? Yeah. Wow. And I find this ridiculous. <laughs> this is upworthy. Pay they no make, attention to the man they, behind the curtain. <laughs> but they make three-minute videos that people can share on their social media. They have to be honest. Parker Malloy also wrote, WikiLeaks is such a sad little group of Alex Jones-loving conspiracy bros. This isn't uh, actually happening, you paranoid dude bros. <laughs> it's not happening. Nothing is clear. Poison the well by invoking the name of Alex Jones. Is, or, yeah. or Gamergate, or whatever, the, or MRAs, or whatever Everything. the boogeyman of your, yep. you want to pick. You know, Just pick one of your boogeyman and inject them in there, and it'll, just, it'll poison the well from then on. The alt Russians right, did it. Russians. Yeah, the alt right Russian gamer MRA Alex Jones loving conspiracy <laughs> nut misogynist Trump supporters were responsible. Yeah. They were all of those things and none of those things because the specter of the patriarchy is a constantly shifting force. 
you and they're all thin, too. Yeah. All of them, all thin, <laughs> evil, thin people. Except for them, they're fat. <laughs> living in their mom's basement. Yeah. All 300 of them in one I, basement. I'm starting to think that it is the chemtrails that's causing this. <laughs> <laughs> and the chemtrails. Buy my water all, filters. Every chemtrail leads to a pothead. By the way, sponsored by Brito. <laughs> yeah. Gotta get them water filters, see, because the government they're they're making your teeth glow and they can track you with a satellite. <laughs> okay. Okay. I okay. thought the dentist did that. <laughs> okay. The dentists are in on it. They they know. They're or part Santa. of the, part of the <laughs> Gotta look out for them. Don't go to the dentist. Don't brush your teeth. Don't use soap. They 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 put tracking devices in the soap. <laughs> Okay. Be a hippie okay. on a commune. Those people know what's going on. They know. Right. There's a reason they want you to, want you to fall unconscious for three minutes so they can put the bug up your ass. <laughs> Get off Ain't your no stage, broke. you fat fuck. Holy shit! It's like Infowars.com, two... people. Infowars. It's like there's two. All right. So, <laughs> so two of two of our members are jonesing now, but we don't know what they want yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, now that we're all woke as fuck, I think um, <laughs> N.C. Clark wants to say something before we move on. Yeah, before we move on, I just wanted to emphasize the reason why a lot of journalists, MSNBC, NBC, a lot of other, um, you know, the mainstream media and the DNC don't want to oh, talk about this. Don't forget that BuzzFeed was on their oh, list. Oh, yeah, BuzzFeed. I actually have that one open. Yes. It's not... It's. It's weird. It's almost like, thanks for the info. We'll talk later. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Um... <laughs> It's it's kind of interesting to note that they'll focus on where they think this came from rather than what is actually inside these emails. Mm -hmm. It's it. I want everyone to, when you're reading these or when you're looking at any of the news coverage, think about that. Why are they focusing on this group that they call, what was it, Fancy Bear and Cozy Bear? <laughs> <laughs> The Russian military and the new KGB, um, why they're focusing on this rather than what's actually inside of these emails. Yeah. Didn't something also in one of the emails say something about how, like, the leader of the Communist Party in the U.S. voted for Bernie Sanders? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then and then he he's now going to vote for Hillary or something like that. Yeah, and then it talked about how Bernie Sanders... But the Sanders Russians exposed it? Yeah, the Russians... Oh, no, because, okay... Their, their premise is this. Anyone who's against um, NATO is okay in their book. Because according to a lot of people, the, the Cold War never ended for Putin. So Putin is going to help Trump because Trump doesn't care if he goes into Eastern European countries. But then again, Obama doesn't care if he goes into Eastern European countries. And I doubt Hillary Clinton would care at all either. So I don't necessarily know. They say they have the IP addresses and, and the malware. It all comes from Russian state actors. We don't know, and Julian Assange has said there is no proof whatsoever that it's actually a distraction from the DNC's failings. Wait, so. wait, hold on. You mean they're using a straw man to distract people from oh, the yes, fucked up yeah. things they did? I know. Isn't that what? interesting? Is, is that like a brand new technique that the media uses? I've never... I've never you know what? This sounds like that. a conspiracy to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe if the DNC had my water filters, they would be woke. I'm just saying. <laughs> <You're>... wow, <laughs> Actually, I do have one, one kind of... Go ahead, Hannah. Oh, Mike, were you talking? <laughs> I was jonesing again. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. No, I, I do have one kind of... I, I don't know whether to call it a conspiracy or just dumbassery. Um, that's that's a new non-word for you there, dumbassery. But it seems like... Um, they, they It's almost like they've taken the list of logical fallacies, of, of, of you know fallacies in reasoning, and gone down each one and go, okay, well, we'll put one of those in here, and we'll put one of those in here. And we'll put, we're going to have the genetic fallacy where we call information invalid because of where it came from. We're going to poison the well. Yeah. We're going to put a big fat straw man over here for people to pay attention to. We're going we're gonna to use ad hominem attacks against anybody who disagrees with us. You know, All of these, and it's weird to see it at this level because I've been watching it happen at the social networking level for years. 
and there's it's it's almost exactly like the the type of troll that you run into like there's two types of trolls that you run into real basic there's the asshole troll that is is just there to be a dick and then there's the troll that almost looks like they're doing it professionally like they have they're not doing it just for the hell of it they're not doing it just for shits and giggles but they're doing it to be a distraction from what you normally would be doing as uh, in your activism or they're doing it to you know get you confused or they're doing it to uh, undermine your your uh, you know your your sense of what you're doing your your trust in yourself and your logic and your your uh, yeah, gaslight, you know your basically. beliefs basically so yeah they're they're trying to gaslight and I have um, I've run into a lot of these you know I've run into them not just on Twitter but on Reddit, on Facebook, every single social site I've been on. And for a while, I was on a whole bunch of them. Um, I was on some that don't even exist anymore because they weren't really successful. And I, I was on some that became more party-type sites, and I kind of left because that's not really what I'm interested in. But everywhere I went, there isn't, hasn't been a single place I've gone where social discussion takes place that includes political discussion online where there has not been this type of troll. And it really is. It's like they go through the list of logic fallacies and they see how can we, you know, mess up this conversation? How can we throw monkey wrenches into people's thoughts on this, into people's thinking on this? And and it's not necessarily I don't want to call it a conspiracy because I don't think there's some central troll network where they all get together and go, okay, what are we going to do next? You know, but I do think that there is some sort of talking point on which this is based, very similar to what the journalists get, very similar to you know, where this is how you do it, some sort of, of uh, not necessarily a manual, but, but essentially advice, and they're following that advice. Now, I know it has come out that Hillary has paid trolls. It has come out that other candidates have paid trolls, and it has come out that both parties have paid trolls. And I wouldn't be surprised if the National Organ Organization for Women has paid trolls. I wouldn't be surprised if any money-making political organization has paid trolls. But I think there are also people who sort of get that information and do it on their own as well. And right. I, I can confirm some really weird experiences, like uh, almost like um, the people coming off of shift work who aren't informing each other properly of the conversation that just ensued. And it's it, it just really bizarre. Yeah, you're going along, and all of a sudden, it seems like the person that that you're arguing with doesn't remember the conversation from yeah, earlier in the day, from like one second ago, or even yeah, the, or like, even half an hour. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, like it's just bizarre. Doing it. yeah. yeah, that's exactly what it sounds like. It sounds like, I, and I've asked them, I'm like, if I just experienced a shift turnover, you don't remember, like, the last yeah. comment? You just... And I've never it was, had before, too. Yeah, it's, it's bizarre, and it makes, you, it makes you paranoid, and then it makes you say, well, I don't want to sound like a conspiracy nut bar, but then you find out that actually people do do this. They employ, groups do employ paid, what somebody in the chat is calling a cold chill. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But uh, I think Brian is ready to move us to the next. Speaking of cold chills and yeah, yeah. cold shells. <laughs> oh, we're going to look at this. Uh, it's everyone's favorite project. The Good Men Good Project. Men project. <laughs> the conversation uh, no one else is having, apparently. Really? Oh, that's what it says. That's their subtitle. No the one else. Project. No one None. else is having the conversation that men should, should man up for women. Yeah, no, this is a no, no. no. This is a completely new idea that has Unique. never been tried before. Groundbreaking stuff. Yep. <laughs> it's it's because of all the estrogen in the water. Okay, so <laughs> have men really given up on marriage because of feminism? Babble of the sexes weighs the cost of the big day. Uh, oh, Babble of the sexes, I get it, because it's like Battle of the sexes, but he's talking. If men okay. are giving up on marriage, isn't that men doing feminism right? <laughs> Isn't that what feminism told everyone to do? So no, 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 Mike. The, the men can't give up on marriage because it hurts men. They have to give up on marriage because it hurts women. You see, that's the problem with MGTOW. If MGTOW was more like men going their own way to stop hurting women, or MGTOW-ST, st uh, stop 
S H W, then they would be okay. Then if they just added those extra letters to the end of their name and, and said, well, yeah. the reason why we are ensuing marriage is because we just don't want to hurt women with our patriarchal penis rays. And our, our toxic masculinities. Yeah, th then they'd be okay. But it's not feminist because it's, it's not recognizing that women are ultimately oppressed by everything a man does. Mm. Everything. Well, let's find out what the Good Man Project and Babel of the Sexes has to say about this. Ooh, there's a popular yes, there's a popular article floating around that claims that men have given up on marriage, and it's all about feminism. Apparently, those awful women who want equality have ventured too far out of the kitchen, and men are taking their ball and going home. Feminism is described by others as the radical notion that women are people, but these folks would have you believe that you can't be both women and people at the same time. That women aren't women anymore. I'm sorry, I just had a hard time with that fucking definition. If I'm men a stroke person. <laughs> I was yeah, I was stroking out as I was reading it. Yeah. I like books. <laughs> I like my like um, amp. If men have given up on marriage. I have some alternative theories. The average cost of an American wedding is $26,444. www.costofwedding.com That's a lot of money. When you add to that the 11244 in student loans and the 8163 in car loans reported by The Motley Fool in January of 2015, getting married is spendy. It's spendy regardless of your gender. Maybe men haven't given up on marriage. Maybe they are too broke to participate. All right, does anybody spendy. want to say anything to that? Did she, re did she really yeah. use the word spendy? It's like okay. saying it's really ouchy going to war. Really spendy. Yeah. The word you're looking for is expensive, my darling. How can we be broke if we're if there's a pay gap and men make more money than women? How All can right. that be possible? <laughs> I, 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 have, I have to condemn here. I have to absolutely condemn. Because she, she, she talks about all these expenses, but she forgot to mention one very, very important point. It is not traditional for the husband the, to be uh, yeah. to fund the wedding. It's the Probably dad. Right. So it, that's not keeping... That's, that's the first thing. And then even more important, the person who spends the bulk of that money is neither the dad nor the husband-to-be. The dad fronts the money. The bride goes on the spending spree. And she buys an expensive dress. I've seen women get married in dresses that cost more than my car cost when it was new. And, you know, and I've seen people spend, they spend thousands of dollars on, on food. They buy an, you know, I've, by time at an elaborate hall, the expense of a band or a DJ, all of the little things that you take for granted when you go to somebody's wedding, they cost an arm and a leg. And there are wedding photographers, the, the, the range for a photographer, like we were on the cheap end and as far as pricing and we actually gave a lot for what we charge. But I've seen wedding photographers charge as much as it, it takes me half a year to make what some of them charge per wedding doing what I do now. And mm -hmm. it, to, to sit around and complain that men are too broke to pay for that, that is bullshit. Make your own goddamn money. Pay for your own goddamn wedding. But, but, but Hannah, that's not treating women like people. You yeah. know who paid for my wedding? My husband and I got, got married? We paid for it. We paid for it together. We worked. We came up with the money and we paid for it. All right, let's oh, keep yeah. going. Yes. The cost of just being together. When I'm low on cash, I look at things that are important to me and not uh, and uh, and not important to me and adjust my spending accordingly. With a reduced social stigma around cohabitation before marriage, there has to be a personal buy-in to spend the money on a formal recognized by the government union. In Canada, at any rate, your rights are essentially the same after a prescribed period of time anyways which is a pretty handy way to save tens of thousands of dollars. I don't personally need the government to bless my need for a two-car garage, and I, Im Im I Im image many young men feel the same way. Don't you mean imagine? Uh, no, maybe image. Okay. I, I image that actually, that's more accurate. 
she's projecting an image. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, can I just... Mm -hmm. What are the rights? Your rights are essentially the same after a prescribed period of time. What rights does this guy... I think it's the man speaking now. What rights does he think that cohabitation grant him with a woman? Does, is you know When they cease to cohabitate, does he have equal rights to the kids and money? No. Like, seriously, what rights do you think are... Uh, on paper. But on that's paper. not how things turn out, right? Well, and in fact... I don't it's on paper. <laughs> women have actually worked to be able to get get money from guys even if they're not married. I mean, California has its palimony laws. You know, and we might think that's ridiculous everywhere else, because it is, but it's happening and it's being pushed in other places. And if it continues to be pushed, it's eventually going to stop failing. You know, and there's another thing. She's, of course, not going to mention the fact that women can use false accusations of domestic violence to get all of his shit. Because in a lot of states, all she has to do is go to the clerk of courts, ask for a temporary emergency restraining order, and he's out of the house, and he still has to pay all the bills. So it, there's no protection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. His, he, that's, and nowhere in this do they actually mention the real reason, and that is the real reason. Men get no protection. But with any of the laws surrounding mar marriage, men get no protection from women. None. And you wonder why men don't want to get married or even cohabitate. Because they don't have any legal protection against you, lady. No, you no, no. You're Godzilla. No, and it's you know, because you can get a prenup, though. And that's that's the same thing, right? Oh. <laughs> Except that prenups are getting thrown out of court left and right because they, they make life hard for women. Yeah. yeah, there's no protection. Like there is no protection. Uh, and you so women aren't making life hard for themselves. You lady are Godzilla, and your man is Tokyo. <laughs> Prior to you know mounting a defense against Godzilla, I don't know. I, I like Asian one. No, no defenses don't work unless you get like a mechanical Godzilla. Anyway. Well, and um, if you mount anything, she's just gonna cry rape. So. Oh. Don't oh. Okay, oh. moving on. I love you, Hannah. I the times you. they are a changing <laughs> after all. The date of the article being circulated is in 2013. Its findings are very heterocentric. Ooh, that's problematic. Perhaps the men surveyed had given up on marriage before because they felt they might never be legally allowed to marry each other, that is. It was not until two years later that SCOTUS would decide on marriage equality. Based on the level of excitement around hashtag love wins, it seemed that there were a lot of men who were excited about the prospect of marriage. They likely weren't deterred by feminists in their enthusiasm. Well, that's because when two men get married, there are, there's no feminism getting in the way. So they, and they tend to stay together longer. Men don't need protection from each other. No. They are an equal, on an equal legal and social playing field. So, I, what is even this? Doesn't that actually shed light on the problem when you see that gay men are totally cool with getting married because they're not likely to screw each other over? In well, fact, they they're not enabled they, to screw each other over. Well, yeah, they're not enabled to. They couldn't do it if they wanted to. But most of the time, gay couples tend to be more financially independent and stable than other kinds of couples. Well, and there's also a degree of respect that they have for each other because it's mutual. And, and it's being on equal terms in a lot of ways. Uh, it's why they don't have the level of domestic violence that heterosexual and lesbian relationships have. Um, they know, if they are going to be violent, that their partner can hit them back. And so neither one of them wants to start shit, I don't know, in general. Well, Hannah, let me, let me propose this question then. Is, could it also be that the fact, well, maybe it's not a fact, but here's an idea. Could it be that heterosexual marriage has been so degraded by just time and divorce and all, all these different factors and the fact that um, gay marriage is something new and it is something that's been kind of fought for very recently, very very stridently, and that they take it more seriously than heterosexual marriages? I mean, do you well, think that's Well, gay relationships have been around for a well, lot no, longer I mean, than gay yeah. marriage, and yeah, they've, yeah. they've been... This is something before there was the, whatever they're calling it now, quilt bag movement or whatever they're calling it now. There was the, you know, there was rainbow, there was LGBT, there was GLBT before the lesbians had to be first, and before all of that, there were various incarnations of just gay rights, 
that that they were fighting, gay men were fighting long before women got involved. Lavender Lads is the one that I know. Um, I know there were other names under which they, they fought for rights. There were other names under which they gathered um, and, and networked over, you know, this is the problems that we're dealing with, what can we do about them? And the first father's rights groups that I ran into when I was dealing with my husband's uh, custody issues with his ex-wife, most of them, the men in those groups were trying to deal with issues of being denied uh, custody or interaction with their children because they were gay, that their, their ex-wives could use their sexuality in court against them. And, oh, he's gay, don't let him be around the kids, they'll catch gay from him. You know, mm. this is, it, it was the stupidest thing, but right. that's what they had to deal with. That's what they had to fight with. And that wasn't, that's not that long ago. You mm. know, that was in like 1999. So this, it just, it's very frustrating to sort of, to, to see people talking about it as if it's a new thing. You know, this battle has been going on for decades and there's there's been a lot of people that have been completely invisible to society that have been fighting for this and I, I don't think that it's new at all for gay men to take their relationships seriously to find well, their balance to I, be dedicated in a relationship or any any you know it's it's not new well I don't you know? mean that it's new in a sense that it's new that it hasn't have ever uh, God, I cannot speak tonight. Um, that hasn't ever happened before, um, because uh, it, it obviously has. But I'm just saying, as in regards to the fact that there is no, gay marriage has been legalized, and like when when something is new like that, it's like and you've been fighting for it for so long. It's I I, I just feel like it's more important to gay couples because they have had to put so much of their you know, so much of themselves into it. It's not just something frivolous. They could just, oh, we can just jaunt off to Vegas and get married at the Chapel of Love or some bullshit like that, you know. It's, it's because, because, it's because well, they're, got, they're, they've fought more for it is what he's saying. Henry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but you, you've got the same thing with lesbians. You've got the same thing even with, you know, poly, polyamory, which still isn't accepted. Um, but you don't necessarily have the same results. So there's there's a, a very stark difference between how things go in on average. And I'm not saying that every lesbian couple is violent and every gay couple is peaceful because that's not true. Right. But there is a very stark difference percentage-wise in the reason for it. You know, I think is because of what consequences are faced by the individual. I think it's people do not attribute enough importance to the fact that women can hit without consequence as a contributor to domestic violence. I think that's one of the biggest contributors to domestic violence because you don't have a physical conflict if somebody doesn't start one. Mm -hmm. Well, let's let's get let's get a little further in here. Okay. All right. We can wax nostalgic about the good old days where marriages used to last, but there's something inherently wrong with assuming that all of those unions should have lasted. There's nothing to celebrate in socioeconomic conditions that forced people to stay in marriages that were unsafe or disadvantageous to their own health and wellness. Okay, I well, one quick, one quick statement. Most, most women dissolve their marriages because they're bored. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, let's, let's continue, though. I don't personally think men are taking their ball and going home because women are interested in equality. I think marriage is expensive, has personal but less social relevance from some perspectives, and a whole bunch of folks who were very interested in marriage were not considered. After all, a level playing field means you can use that ball to have fun with your teammate, who is not your subordinate because progress. Oh, for fuck's sake. Really sure. I don't personally what? think men are taking their ball home and going. Most men have too. But yeah, this is, you're only taking one ball and going home. Ouch. Yeah. It, 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 the, the fact that they can't even own up to what is actually making men afraid to commit to women and or even trust women. And some men to even interact with women 
You know, and the fact that that fear is legitimate, it's not being chicken when you know that somebody can wreck your entire life with one accusation. That's not an illegitimate fear. You know, especially if you are from one of many families that is very, very careful to make sure that they teach their daughters to be good judges of character when, when they look for a partner in life, but doesn't do the same for their sons. And I can't count how many times I've had guys ask, how can I tell the difference between a woman who's going to make a false accusation and a woman who's not? Because they can't. They don't. They can't tell. They don't know. They don't know what to look for. They don't know how to, to measure accountability in a woman. And it seems to be a shocking revelation when I say things to them like, don't have a romantic relationship with somebody that if you were looking at becoming their business partner, you wouldn't trust them. You wouldn't do it. You know, mm -hmm. don't don't get involved with somebody who you already know lies to you. <laughs> don't get involved with somebody who feels like you owe them things. Don't get involved with somebody who can't thank you when you do something for her. You can't admit you know, when you those do are, something wrong. You know, if they can't admit when they make a mistake. You know, mm -hmm. those are red flags. And there are uh, women are taught to look for those red flags. In fact, women are taught not only to look for those red flags, but to expect a guy to pamper them. And if he doesn't pamper them enough, then they go for some other guy. How many people tell their sons, marry a woman who's going to take good care of you? They mm -hmm. don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's not even politically correct to, to, to say, marry a woman who's not going to put you on the couch after the wedding. Yeah. All right. Moving on. So I guess they have different people with different that are going to comment. So someone named Jay. Jay. Yeah. I'm going to propose something radical. Instead of blaming feminism, I think feminism should be taking the credit, at least partial credit anyway. I think feminism, the LGBTQ, LMNMOVP movement, divorce rates, and a whole lot of other factors have changed how people, not just men, view marriage. For years, society has defined what it means to have a successful relationship. It is now often referred to as the relationship escalator. That is, a societal defined path of steps from meeting to dating to ex exclusivity to marriage. Now people are realizing that instead of having a society define the rules for them, they can actually choose to define what works for themselves. And people are doing just that. They are choosing to create relationships that reflect their own values and needs. For some, that simply means eschewing the costs, both monetary and emotional, of marriage. Emotional costs of marriage? They, have, they may have every appearance of a traditional heteronormative marriage <laughs> without the ceremony or the legal piece of paper, and they are just as happy. In fact, there was a recent study out of Ohio State University that says, now it appears that young people, especially women, get the same emotional boost from moving in together as they do from going directly into marriage. There's no additional boost from getting married. How the fuck do you measure that? Ohio God State knows. University, huh? Ohio. In Ohio, they have pushed through legislation to reduce the amount of time a man has to, to lay claim to his child if his girlfriend gets pregnant. So if his girlfriend can hide her pregnancy from him, he can, she can keep him from, from having any custody rights, she can keep him from having any visitation rights, and she can still get child support. That keep going, fair. Brian. I just, mm. Yeah. This fucking... This is, this is going to be fun. This is, I didn't realize it was going to be such a slog. Okay. But should I guess I, I should have. Continue. Should I move on? Okay. And it isn't just about exclusive monogamous relationships anymore. As people let go of the societal rules, those fucking rules, many are realizing that they have the ability to have deeply connected and committed relationships with more than one person. All forms of non-monogamy, such as polyamory and relationship anarchy, are becoming more common. They allow individuals to create relationships that are far more flexible and don't require one person to try to be all things to another. Oh, that sounds like a... I'm not even going to go... Yeah, I'm not going to go into that. So when they let go of these rules, when they dissolve marriage, 
men are the ones who walk away from it, which suggests that marriage has been here this whole time to prevent men from having free relationships. I mean, that's that's what these these couple of pieces of evidence suggest to me. So at least if everyone could if everyone could be honest about that, rather mm -hmm. than the upside down land suggestion, that that might be a good start. If, oh, well, we yeah, haven't even got to the upside down land suggestion yet. If 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 men are walking away from marriage, and then one of the types of marriages that this person is bringing up is are all forms of non-monogamy, such as polyamory and relationship anarchy, uh, which are becoming more common. What the is fuck is what relationship, is relationship anarchy? anarchy? <laughs> <laughs> what is relationship anarchy? Let's find out. Yeah, I'm I'm, um, I'm really confused about that because it sounds like a sexual mosh pit. It's the practice of for you the practice of forming relationships. Sounds like a are, Google Hangout. Yeah. <laughs> No, it sounds more like a gooey hangout. <laughs> May I? Often one of the same. Often one of the same. <laughs> uh, relationship anarchy is the practice of forming relationships that are not bound by rules aside from what the people involved mutually agree on. So it does have rules. Wait, that's all relationships. Yes. If yeah. a relationship and anarchy. That's not anarchy. That's the opposite of anarchy. <laughs> Let me get through this. <laughs> they come up with the name. Don't go any further. We gotta, we gotta finish this. Uh, <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with these people? <laughs> if a relationship anarchist has multiple intimate partners, it can be considered as a form of polyamory, but distinguishes itself by postulating that there need not be a formal distinction between sexual, romantic, or platonic relationships. Oh God, this is. Uh, these people have too I'm much done. time on their hands. I'm done. Oh, I'm done. One clarification, because they, they there's no rules except for those that are agree, agreed upon by all involved. It, polyamory only has rules that are agreed upon by everyone involved. If everyone involved doesn't agree on it, it's not a rule, because and somebody's going to no break rules. it. Somebody, you know, that. Mm, this is let like me, the stupidest, also, one of the stupidest things I've seen come out of. Yeah. If anarchy, it doesn't have any rules. I, I just so, want to. I just want to reiterate that anarchy is is no rules, none. No none. Rules, anarchy. Yeah. There, there, That's no. why I said it sounds like a sexual mosh pit. I'm having a stroke again. I all think. right, all right. Our, our relationship <laughs> is an orgy. We just, you know, keep repeating it. <laughs> so you can't have a relationship with no rules, is what Scott's getting at. If, if you just, have a relationship, yeah. then it, it, it means. That's the difference between having a relationship and not. If you don't have a <laughs> relationship like, with someone, then there's no rules. That's how. It, yeah. It looks like they're trying to to formalize hookup culture with a new yeah, name. They are. You know what? It, uh, is, it seems like it. it but here's not stare too 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 no, no, no. long into the brown star. My brain hurts. Here's the thing: <laughs> if men are walking away from marriage, and in this paragraph they set up all of these crazy things. Well, not not that they're all crazy, but if there are forms of non-monogamous relationships such as polyamory and relationship anarchy and men are saying I'm not interested in that I want something monogamous or I don't want anything at all because the the landscape is just too fucking chaotic then this per the, is the is the idea then that there's something wrong with men and that they have to adapt to this because where there would be no need to mention the existence of non-monogamous relationships as an option unless men were saying they don't want to do that which is you know very likely um, <laughs> now this doesn't mean that polyamorous relationships can't work because I know that there are that there are people out there that do it but I I have a feeling that that's this right here what's being described is more of a um, uh, what is it you know getting essentially um, that that uh, you know, getting the benefits and not having to pay any of the of the penalties, you know, have my cake, have my cake and eat it too, kind of thing. They you can know? work, but it is it is hard. There has to be a lot of dedication. You mm -hmm. can't go into it with the idea that it's going to be a party. You can't go into it uh, with the idea that that you know it's that it's going to be easy at all. It's it's actually harder. The more people you add to a relationship, yeah. it's harder because oh, you're yeah. not just dealing with one person's issues or two people's issues. Each person that comes into a poly relationship has their own background and their own hang-ups, their own needs that may be different from the other two's needs. And the communication factor, it becomes one more step important each time. Yeah. This is something that, like, 
pe people talk about this and they're like, oh, well, it can't work, it can't work. Well, it can. But you damn well better be an accountable person if you're going to try it. You well, have to be more I'm responsible to do unless, that. Unless you're doing poly, uh, relationship anarchy, in which case you can make a rule saying, I don't want to <laughs> deal with your shit. <laughs> yeah. so, I don't want to deal with any shit. Relationship anarchy just sounds like an open relationship. Conspiracy. Yeah, it sounds like... <laughs> Gee, Doc, I don't know how I got these herpes. Well, maybe can, you got the herpes while you were you know, screwing <laughs> yeah. the pig was... suspended from a ceiling fan. Yeah. You might that not was have sarcasm that. on his part, obviously. <laughs> But uh, right. no, no, no. I'm not. I'm not saying that conspiracy actually has herpes. But that's just it. <laughs> it the, like the, the commentator the, who does not have herpes. Commentator he's without herpes. Fun, clearly, he's making fun of the relationship anarchy thing, which, which, like I said, sounds uh, an awful lot like an an open relationship, mm -hmm. you know, except without people uh, in the relationship being uh, accountable for having consideration for each other's needs and feelings, and and uh, you know personal welfare. Speaking of my needs and feelings not being account accounted for, um, we're, <laughs> we're, we're, yeah, let's, let's, yeah, cause we're going over, eh? Okay, yeah, we're, no, we are over. All right, so are we really upset about the decline in marriage? So it begs this question. If people are choosing different relationship styles, formations, and commitments, who is upset about a decline in marriage? The obvious answer is people who benefit the most from marriage. While it may be argued that everyone may benefit in some way, I think it's hard to dispute that men have benefited more than women in heterosexual marriage. Wait a second. <laughs> what? Oh, because what? Because everybody what? Loves being homeless and going to jail no, for not yeah, being able to pay child service based on Okay, guys. One at a time. Okay, Allison, me. Go. Okay. Obvious oh, answer is people who benefit the most from marriage. Okay, so who's upset about the decline? I thought you were talking about men walking away from marriage and the men not being particularly upset about... what you, you, In the fucking beginning of your article, you were talking about why are men walking away from marriage, and now you're saying that they're walking away from marriage because they're the ones who benefit most from marriage because they cock a fuck? Like, how can you... This is this really <laughs> is Liz Ups to its name. It's Babel. What a twist! Perfect <laughs> <laughs> logic from somebody who's bought into feminist beliefs. Oh That's the oh first God. mistake. God, you have like to create so an oxymoron. You have to create an oxymoron in order to believe this, and they did. Relationship anarchy. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh like, okay, so, so let's. Like, okay, oxymoron. so what is what is the upside for men? Like, okay, um, I, I mean, I, I'm trying to find an upside here, and I'm like. The only thing I can think of is like uh, maybe you have consistent sex. Uh, no. I, but no. yeah, but that's the thing. That's not even you know that's not even a, you know a, a guaranteed thing. Not if, that, you were, if you were getting, thing, but... if you were getting if you were getting sex, then that would not be good for you because it would be bad for her. Right. Because according to the Good Men Project, sex is not <laughs> something that men and women share. Sex is something a woman gives to a man, or a man takes from a woman. Oh God! Like, um, I, just, I, I just don't get this because, like, if you look at this on a, on just the most, you know, logical um, uh, uh, basis, uh, you know, baseline, if we're talking about strictly law, men get the shit end of it every single fucking time. Like, if like when the marriage ends, men get fucked. They are always they are always culpable and liable for for fucking you know child support this that and the other all these other things there's no there's no upside for men in marriage like there's or, only or... one thing that i can think of there's only one thing that i can think of and it's not a consistent thing and even where it is consistent it's not guaranteed and that is if your partner gets pregnant and has a baby you have more chance not a guarantee, but more chance at actually having some custody rights to that child if if you married your partner than you do if you didn't marry your partner. And it's, it's, that's something that, you know, single women, a woman who is not married, never, ever has her, her custody rights to her child threatened just because she wasn't married to the father. Nobody's going to come along and say, you don't get to be the mother of this child because you weren't married. <laughs> but that right. happens to men. Yeah. That happens to men mm -hmm. every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And okay. even if you are married, though, you're still that's still kind of it, it seems like it's still kind of an uphill battle, though. Yeah, it's, it's a huge uphill battle. Yeah. Uh, next paragraph. 
Let's get through right. this. Uh, our We're social paid. system has been set up to give men more flexibility and more power in marriage. It wasn't even that long ago that men could legally rape a woman as long as he was married to her. Unfortunately, women can still legally rape men who are married to them. <laughs> or not. And any man, really. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, that is still true in some places, Islam. And there are people that still believe it should be that way today. A recent article hey, by... Hey, hey, Islam oh, oh. is equal opportunity there, too. Yeah? No, I uh, know. A woman should have the right of her husband, uh, whatever many... And the, only, and the only way that I've seen that enforced is one way. That a the woman really does have the right to have sex with her husband in Islamic mm -hmm. countries. Anyway, continue. All right. A recent article by a Christian blogger who provided eight steps to take if your wife won't have sex. While he says he would never advocate for a husband to force himself physically upon his wife or to physically abuse her in any fashion, he is more than happy to suggest shaming her in public and withdrawing her funding. Those steps may not be physical force. But I'll just say that if it walks like a duck, well, you're not saying fucking anything, um, buddy. And actually, what he's saying is that men owe their wives money. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Because uh, apparently okay, their well, wives do not, not owe them, but, but their wives don't owe the men sex. Yeah. Yeah, but okay. it, but men actually do also owe their wives sex as well because and they withdrawing sex. sex is is abuse as long well, as. Well, what the fuck do you get married women. for if you don't want to have sex with each other? I don't. Even if you don't want to be together, if you don't love the person, if you're not attracted to them, why the fuck are you getting married? Amen, Hannah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go, Scott. A case where men don't get fucked in a marriage. <laughs> um. Okay. I see the. <laughs> I see the willingness of individuals to take responsibility for designing their own relationships, specifically men, and ultimately happiness is a good thing. Making choices that are authentic, fulfilling, and not just denied, or rather defined, by societal obligation are what I encourage as a therapist. What better place to do that than in important relationships? So feminism, if you contributed to those changes, I offer a big thank you. And there's just the last paragraph. Last paragraph. No, Allison, feminism didn't contribute to those fame. Those, those, uh, the pill did. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, we'd all be getting fucking married. And, 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 and there, there's no way around it. And guess what? The pill was invented by men. Do you mean the pill that worked? Just saying. Do you mean the pill that worked or those, like, 20 pills that didn't work? Because the pill that worked was a feminist action, Allison. You keep forgetting. What? <laughs> when I, the pill I, I works. don't even. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm good, not, good thing I'm happened not, to I'm women. Not. That good thing happened to women. That means feminism did it. Oh well, yeah. 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 When it works, educate it yourself. <laughs> yeah. Educate yourself. You know, and it's not like there was birth control before the pill, because you know condoms never existed until after, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Allison responds. Not our Allison. You raise some really good points. Sometimes giving up on something and making a different choice are a matter of perspective. I think feminism. I thank feminism for giving me a choice. I know my partner and I are defining our own path for our relationship that makes sense to us. Steve Shives, anybody? <laughs> His one disappointing discovery was that he hoped this feminist would be more equitable about sharing the covers. Oh, uh, that's so cute! Yeah. Oh, barf. Okay. <laughs> oh God. We're done. Jesus Christ. So exactly, yeah. exactly. What choice does he think feminism gave men? You know, do everything women want or get it with false accusations? Was that the choice, or maybe it was you get married or or don't have any chance at custody rights if you your your girlfriend gets pregnant. You know, and then of course, if you do get married, you better work really, really hard to keep her because, yeah, you have a chance at custody rights, but in most places, it's a slim one, and if you fight for it, you put yourself at greater risk because that's when most women start making false accusations. That's when they start saying, "Oh no, when we were married, he beat me. Oh no, when he we were married, sometimes I said no, and then he raped me," and and they'll use that in court to get you know more custody rights to 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 keep you from having a chance to be with your kids to get to get more property out of the marriage 
to get everything. It's really simple. Nice choice. Men are walking away from marriage because marriage is a situation of complete vulnerability. It enables it enables all kinds of abuses against men via the state uh, at their at their partner's behest. And I just I still am like baffled at that article. Simultaneously at the beginning saying why are men walking away from marriage and then concluding that men aren't walking away from marriage because marriage benefits them then that's why they're walking away from marriage. This article is, is just gobbledygook. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't make any fucking s like this is this is this this is this, this is the, the 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 inmates this guy's a therapist the inmates are running the asylum and mm -hmm. the asylum is on fire and it is also sinking in the <laughs> Pacific. So it's it, this is what more can you say? Allison, and this guy's sitting at a table in the middle, going, "I'm totally okay with this. Yeah, everybody's this okay. is fine." Let Let me remind you that this this article invoked relationship anarchy. I just, I just, I, I can't, I can't get past it. I know. I'm sorry. This, but and this <laughs> article is article anarchy. Oh my I, I, I know it's not even anarchy because it doesn't follow any rules. But, well, well, that article. Is anarchy. It's yeah, I guess it's entropy. Like, entropy. It, it just sort of yeah. fell apart at the seams. Yeah. It, All right. Relationship anarchy. I get this mental image of a marriage taking place in the church, and instead of vows, they've got a headbanging priest at the front and death metal being played the entire time. <laughs> I was thinking about <laughs> music, but yeah, I was yeah, I was thinking like you know the the preacher's got uh, like a, a a giant blue mohawk and he's fucking yeah. like. He's throwing condoms at everybody and calling them sinners, and you know yeah. everybody's eating Jello shots. <laughs> okay. Right. Anyway, metalheads. Please don't associate us metalheads with anarchists. Those That's people true. are terribly pretentious. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's not not like there's there's a song called Anarchy in the UK or anything. <laughs> yeah, sex pistols, Speaking wankers, of all anarchy. of our folks. <laughs> Speaking of anarchy. Yeah. Yeah. Time to wrap it up. Yeah. Okay. Wrap that shit up. So it's time to go. There, there was a shill in the middle, beginning-ish, so we don't need to repeat it again. Yep, um, we do. Okay. www.patreon.com slash honeybadgerady. You know you want to see us in real life. Yes. In a studio. Bigger than life. In a studio. Well, yeah. Can we get a Shiba Inu? Can, it, it, Can we, it? like, make it a mascot? It's a Shiba um, Inu. It's, yeah. it, it's a dog. Okay. I, know, I know what it is. I'm just oh, like... Okay. I'm not... Those things are fucking expensive, dude. <laughs> badger. We should get a honey badger, a real one. No, we should not get a honey oh, badger. Jesus. What the fuck is <laughs> we have real honey badgers. There. <laughs> Why do we have to take responsibility for an animal? I, I, I can I'll like not care enough. Them. Okay, let's 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 get out of here. So yeah, I am not an animal. 